What up, guys? It's me, Sean Blue. Welcome back to another episode of Here's Looking at You with Sean Blue. Shout out to all my Blue Jays out there. Had to film that a few times. <laughs> I am here to talk to you guys about a professional wrestler named Vampiro, who I had the pleasure of meeting many years back. Let me talk about Vampiro's early life. Vampiro is Canadian, so he grew up in Canada, where... His father left him, his mother, and his little sister behind at an early age. And his neighbor kind of became his father figure. And one day, his neighbor ended up raping Vampiro. And Vampiro always had a hard time fitting in at school. The other kids, like, would make fun of him and stuff. Vampiro was different. And... But... One good thing about Vampiro, he was always true to himself. He always did his own thing. And his mother used to rent out rooms to people. Um, like one time to this young man who ended up committing suicide. Where it was up to Vampiro and his mother to help clean up his um, personal supplies, clothes, and whatever else. And Vampiro stumbled upon these records that the man owned. And one of the records was The Clash, the punk rock band The Clash. And Vampiro took it to his room and he listened to it and he immediately became a fan of punk rock from there. So from age 12 all the way to now, Vampiro has always been about punk rock and music. And when he went to school, he ended up cutting his hair into a, a giant uh, pompadour hair that went really high. And he had started dressing up in all punk rock clothes, and he was even getting made fun of even more th from the kids. But he didn't care because he found himself through music. And so he was always dressed up head to toe in punk rock stuff, always listening to punk rock music. And he was also um, big for his age, so he was really good at sports, particularly hockey, since it was Canada. And by the time he was like 16, 17 years old, he had like green hair, and he was just wild looking. And his coaches were always on him about changing up his look because, yeah, he had a gift of, um, he was very talented in hockey, but hockey's very conservative and you have to make your, your appearance look very conservative and with vampire with the green hair and the wild outfits and stuff like that. It's like, no, it's, that's who I am. I'm, I'm punk rock. And one day when he was watching professional wrestling on TV, Legion of Doom came out, Hawk and Animal, and they came out, I believe, to, um... Um, Black Sabbath, and you know, LOD had the spike shoulder pads and the mohawks, and Vampiro's like, wow, that's what I want to be. I want to be a professional wrestler because a professional wrestler is not as conservative. You can kind of be whatever the hell you want, and that's the two things he was into. He was into music, rock and roll, punk rock, and he was also into sports, such as hockey, but hockey was too conservative. He found himself in professional wrestling, it's a sport, and you get to be yourself. And Vampira ended up leaving Canada, I think, when he was 18. And um, he went to L.A. And L.A. is a very dangerous place, especially for someone who was pretty innocent, like Vampira, despite his tough upbringing, but still pretty innocent. So he wasn't used to L.A. And he was homeless for three months where he hid underneath a car, um, just to get away from the, the night crowds and stuff like that, why all kinds of creeps walk around. And he ended up meeting uh, another professional wrestler who I like, or at least did like. His name's Rick Martell, better known as The Model. And I used to really like Rick Martell, but according to Vampire, uh, Rick Martell was like a, just like a dick to him. So I don't really look, look at uh, Rick Martell the same way anymore because of uh, how he uh, treated Vampiro, I heard. And Vampiro wanted to be a professional wrestler, so they let him travel in the back of the, the truck with all the supplies and stuff like that, working his way up. And Vampiro ended up going down to uh, Mexico, where um, he caught on pretty quick, with, especially with the teenage girls and the young women. The older uh, Mexican guys didn't get his whole rock and roll look, because at that point, Vampiro you know, had the tattoos... He was very goth looking with the white face, uh, the long uh, black dreads that he ended up dying purple as well. So Vampire made a huge name out of himself throughout all of Mexico and, and people just loved him. He was just so rock and roll and so different than what Mexico was used to with their wrestling. And 
he ended up coming back to America. He ended up coming to America where, um, he ended up um, wrestling for WCW along with other wrestling federations. I know he tried to get into ECW, but um, he wasn't able to make that work. Um, so he ended up becoming a big name in WCW, but he wasn't really happy doing it because they wouldn't let him have his freedom that he wanted to do. And even though he was making a lot of money, it, it just wasn't for him. And I know later on, I don't know if he still works for them, but he ended up working for Lutra Underground, which he loved. And... Um, he was getting into still like crazy matches there and he was doing commentary and Vampiris um just loved the uh, the wrestling business, but he also loved um punk rock, so he he had his own band, he was playing his own music at concerts, and and I know he's a human activist now, so like um he helps out um incest survivors and other types of um people that are going through tough times, like anti bullying stuff. And he's just a very good activist in that way. He also works with the Guardian Angels, which was where I met him. It's through a wrestling show through the Guardian Angels uh, many moons back. And, um, yeah, and, and Vampire's a vegan now. So, um, yeah, I, last time I saw Vampire, he was just doing an interview. And, yeah, he was just happy. He has a grown daughter now. And, yeah, life's good for him. <laughs>